On the 3rd of May 1998, Manchester City were relegated to the third tier of English football. And this remains their lowest ever ranking within the footballing pyramid in England. In the 1998-99 season, City had a poor start, but picked up form towards the end of the season, finishing in the playoffs. 2-0 down, heading into the 90th minute within the playoff final at Wembley. City pulled it back to 2 all with two late goals against Gillingham and won the game on penalties, making it back up into the championship. City were promoted again the next season, this time back into the Premier league from the championship the blues claimed an automatic spot on the final day of the season away at blackburn in a game that was almost like a home match with how many city fans were there just look at the scenes on this image here after a few more ups and downs city found themselves quite stable within the top tier of english football and on the 1st of september 2008 sheikh mansour's abu dhabi united group bought manchester city football club this day will go down as one of the biggest in the club's history and it changed the face of english football as we knew it city had always been a big club having a very core working class local fan base whereas United's fan base was more globalised more international and it was more business orientated contrast to popular belief City actually did have quite a rich history pre-takeover having won two first division titles and a host of domestic cups as well as one European Cup winners cup in 1970 some people also theorised that City had a poor fan base at the point of takeover but this is very untrue Sheikh Mansour wanted to tick off two key elements when buying his football club Everton and Newcastle for example were in contention but City were the option they had a new stadium moved into in 2003 following the Manchester Commonwealth Games and also a core fan base that Sheikh Mansour knew was vital for his club to become a superpower when Mansour first moved in it was all about making a statement of intent some of the signings he made may have not been for the long term as we see with City nowadays but some of them was just about emphasising what he wanted to do with Manchester City Robinho was signed for a club record fee and a British record fee of 40 million euros. At this time, there were no financial fair play regulations. And at the end of the day, Sheikh Mansour just bought a business. And like any business owner, you're going to want to invest in your business to improve it. Many think the City were relegation fodder. They were towards the bottom of the table, likely to go down when Mansour took over. But they actually finished ninth the season just before Sheikh Mansour took over with Sven Goran Eriksson in charge. Then Mark Hughes took over for one season before Roberto Mancini was in charge. Success came quickly under Mancini, a very driven and interesting character who brought in some very key signings to the club. Yaya Torre, David Silva, Sergio Aguero were just a few names he brought in. Over the next three years, several cash injections from Sheikh Mansour and his group saw City progress in the league and in domestic cups. City ended a 35-year major trophy drought by winning the FA Cup in 2011. The round prior, however, was somewhat of a turning point in Manchester as City knocked out Manchester United United in the semi-final. In this same year, City qualified for the UEFA Champions League for the first time and this would have seen significant revenues go into the club. The following season, City won the league title dramatically on the final day against QPR. In that season, City did a derby double over United, winning 6-1 at Old Trafford, followed by a 1-0 win at the end of April. Players like Joe Hart, they'd been at the club previously, as well as Vincent Company, Pablo Zabaleta, established themselves as legends at the club. Yaya Torre, David Silva, Sergio Aguero also did the same. And the amount of goals this team was creating, the amount of chances, the football they were playing was incredible. It's worth mentioning that in May 2009, Etihad Airways became a key sponsor involving the club. Etihad Airways sponsored the ground to rename it the Etihad Stadium as it remains today. And also it became a key shirt sponsor. Some suggest that Mansour inflated City's revenues by using this shirt sponsor artificially to inject cash. People can compare this shirt sponsorship to the previous one in Thomas Cook and say that it's a lot higher than the other one. However, City were now playing in European competitions and competing towards the top of the Premier League, winning trophies, being exposed to a more global fan base. City had become more of a powerhouse, more of a, a threat to the top of the Premier League table. Some of the self-proclaimed elite clubs in England, for example, we may talk about Man United, they actually wrote collectively to the FA, to UEFA, to propose some financial fair play, as they put it, regulations. These would restrict the growth and the investment of newly bought clubs clubs and clubs with up and coming investors to enable these self-proclaimed bigger clubs to stay at the top City of course did have some clashes and some sanctions that were given to them from financial fair play as it was first brought in and that is partially because City didn't expect this, it was a completely unexpected thing. Financial fair play effectively forces clubs to run in a sustainable way, you can't overly invest to a point in which you put the club's future at risk is how they put it In 2022, Manchester United have a two year rolling period 
loss of over £138 million. United spent a quarter of a billion this summer. They've also lost the Champions League revenue. They've also got the highest wage bill in football history. So Man United keeping up with these financial fair play rules is going to be very, very difficult and they're likely to get sanctioned next season, which is very ironic. But going back to when they were first introduced, City continued to invest. City are actually today a very, very self-sustainable club. They have a very good wage structure. They don't overly invest in players. And we actually kind of spend what we earn, so to speak. City are the only club in England to have qualified for the Champions League for the last 12 consecutive seasons. And that's at least 80 million in revenue every single season. We've also won many, many Premier League titles. Six, in fact. Significant increases in revenues have been seen. And the Academy prospect City create and sell are kind of gone behind the scenes. People don't see them. Sheikh Mansour's overall investment and plan to build this superpower has been very successful so far. He's invested in local infrastructure. He's invested in schools, in housing. So much in Manchester that you don't see behind the scenes. Phil Foden, a now 22-year-old young lad from the local area who was brought up in the new academy that Sheikh Mansour invested so heavily in, has now won four Premier League titles and he's just 22. It's incredible. Incredible, and it brings us over to another 22-year-old, the megastar in Erling Haaland that City have signed just recently. It shows a great investment plan for long-term signings that City want to bring in at a young age and really push forward and advance their game to a point in which they can just make the team so much better. We've seen this with other players such as Ruben Diaz, and although they may cost quite a bit, we bring them in at an age where they don't cost an insane amount of money and develop them through Pep's system to make them part of just such an incredible team. City have become one of the most successful clubs in England, one of the most successful clubs in the world nowadays, done in a way that doesn't compromise the future, whereas Manchester United do compromise the future. We've seen their gradual demise. They overspend, they spend more than anyone on wages, on players, and they underperform on the pitch because it's not sustainable, and that is why they're on the decline. Manchester City have gradually grown to the point in which they're at today. Sheikh Mansour is an icon in Manchester. He's done this investment in such an incredibly strategic strategic way. He's got the right men behind the scenes, the right men on the front line, the right players, the right coaching staff. And it's incredible to see what he's done, but that is why he's not just an oil man. It's not an oil club. It's all about long-term investment, planning for the future. And that's why City are the superpower that they are today. Thank you for watching. I hope this did give you some insight into how Manchester City became the superpower they are today and why the investment of Sheikh Mansour is far from just oil money. Hopefully you enjoyed watching that video, guys. It was interesting to make and also a huge shout out goes to El Nobbins FC. He helped to edit the video. If you enjoy this type of content, I'm sure you'll enjoy his. And you can check out his videos, his channel, and also some of his social accounts in the description below. If you enjoyed this video though, please consider subscribing to me, liking this video, and leaving a comment below with your thoughts. Nice one.